We stand... Ooh, that's very loud. <laughs> that didn't wake you up. If you weren't awake... You are now. You are now. Uh, we stand to sing hymn number 237, Morning Has Broken. As we stand together, let's say these words together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Please be seated uh, for a few moments. Um, <clears throat> just a couple of, well, quite a few notices. Um, we are starting this week our uh, stewardship, stewardship campaign over the next few Sundays at church where we are focusing on uh, that aspect of the Christian life, which is around our giving. And so the services that we have um, put together are services that will be thinking about a Christian thought process around how we give. And that comes into three categories. It comes under how we care for our creation, the creation that God has given us, how we use our time, and how we use our money. So we're going to be thinking about the our stewardship in those th under those three headings, starting with our, our care of creation this morning. And so our readings, we have stepped aside from the usual lectionary readings. And so if you're looking at your pew sheet this morning and seeing that it's not the lectionary readings, and uh, maybe things have really gone to pot, uh, <laughs> that's why. It's because we're focusing on this aspect of stewardship as we think through what it is uh, to, to respond to God. Um, through our care of creation, how we utilise the time that we have and we utilise the financial resources that we've been given. And to that end, over the next couple of weeks, we'll be dripping out slightly more information about our church's financial status. And there's a sheet here which very helpfully breaks down some of the things that happen in church with your money that you give so far and uh, where we stand at the moment just in bold, bold headings. And we'll hear more about that over the next few weeks. But the essential thing is this. We are seeking to prayerfully respond to how we utilise our money and how we respond as a church to the responsibilities that we have in our community to share the love of God in this environment and in this community. And that, as I said, comes under those three headings, creation, time and money. So if you are new to church and you haven't given before, we will be encouraging you to take these giving leaflets and um, prayerfully consider what you can give on a regular basis. If you've been at church for a long time, we're going to prayerfully ask you to review your giving uh, and uh, consider whether that's still the level that you can give. But as I said, we'll continue to explore that, those themes over the coming weeks. Just a couple of other quick notices. Uh, this coming Wednesday, we have John Ramsden's funeral here in church. Many of you will know John over many years. 
and uh, it would be lovely if people are, uh, are able to come and join us uh, as we give thanks for John's life and for all that he brought. Um, a couple of other things to notice as well. Um, John and Sally continue to be away. Uh, John's mum died on Friday, um, and so there's all kinds of arrangements to be made there. And so we'll pray for them in our intercessions later on today um, as they continue to make those arrangements. Um, We've been praying for Fraser and Reuben, uh, the boys that were involved in the accident up on uh, Utree Lane, and uh, we think that things are progressing quite well there, so we're grateful for answers to prayer, but we continue to pray for them and their families. It's a very traumatic time, as you can imagine. Um, and then, very sadly, uh, Jean Bennett, who was a long-standing member of our choir, passed away on Saturday. Um, many of you will know Jean, a uh, very active member of this church over very many years. And we'll be praying for her as well. I think that's all the notices, except there's a, an abundance of notices in your pew sheets. Um, so please uh, continue to that. The only other thing that I will highlight is our, you're all familiar with the earthquake that's taking place in Turkey and Syria. And we are responding to that um, and, and giving through the DEC. And so there's a QR code in your pew sheet if you want to give directly to that as well as on the machine at the back. I think that's all the notices. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, this afternoon at 3.30, there is a service of Evensong. If you've never been to an Evensong, can I recommend that you come along um, and uh, come and partake in that service of Evensong? Um, songs of prayers and songs of worship uh, and, a, and a time of just quiet, um, I don't know how else, what else would I say, quiet and contemplative and yes, it's very good. <laughs> Great. Let's just pause and pray there and then we'll continue. Father God, we do give you thanks for all the busyness of our church life. We do give you thanks for these people who we love and we hold up to you, John and Sally, in their situation. And we give thanks for John Ramsden and his life and his family who continue to be part of parcel of our fellowship here. We pray for Jean Bennett and her family at this time. And we continue to pray and give thanks for the progress of Fraser and Reuben. And Lord, as we come to worship you this morning, would you lift our eyes and our hearts to the work that you're doing in amongst us and through us in this place for your glory and our good. Amen. And let's stand uh, and say together the words that were printed on your sheet. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your Lord. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And then let us sit or kneel for our prayers of penitence. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Let's just pause for a moment. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Stand for, for the glory of
as we stand, we pray the collect. Almighty God, give us reverence for all creation and respect for every person, that we may mirror your likeness in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please sit for our first reading. Verses 1 to 3 of chapter 2. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed is in its fruit. You shall have them for food and to every beast on the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth Everything that has breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And so it was. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand to sing our gradual hymn, hymn number 78, for the fruits of his creation. In the yellow.
hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But Jesus said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, what should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich towards God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. As we come to uh, these words, these passages this morning, let's just pray. Father God, we thank you for your written word. May we see your living word, Jesus Christ, as we consider these words. Amen. Please sit. A um, little bit of um, participation probably required this morning. As you've noticed, uh, the children aren't in junior church. Uh, it's half term, so we like to give our volunteers a little bit of a rest. Um, and so I need, a, I need a couple of volunteers. Would that be possible, do you think? If not, I'll just have to pick on someone from the choir. Um, As we come to these words, let's start by keeping, keeping that passage in front of you from Genesis, first of all. This is probably going to be the, the worst possible presentation of the Genesis account, but there we go. Um, okay, so there are three things that I want us to think about this morning, and I've got three symbols. Would somebody come and help me hold those up? Would you come out? Thank you. Yes? Come and hold these up. I need two more helpers. Anybody willing to help? You, come on then. So, oh, we've got, we'll just need one. Yes, I'll, uh, okay, you can hold that one. You can hold that one. And you two can hold that one. Can you hold them up so people can see? Okay, so what have you got? What have we got? Anybody? There's a, so there's a gift. What else have we got? So we've got somebody giving a gift. And then we've got, it says thankful, it's a bit small. Hold it up, Fraser. Sorry, Fletcher. I'm having a dreadful time with names at the moment. It's awful. Um, that's great. So we've got a gift, we've got somebody giving a gift, and we've got, let's call this gratitude, shall we? And then we've got give a gift and gratitude, okay? Give a gift and gratitude, okay. Do you want to just sit on the step? Because I, 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 you, you will be needed but not just yet. Okay. So we've got a giver, we've got a gift, and we've got a gratitude. And I wonder if when you read those verses in Genesis, you saw what we were given. Did you see what we were given? What were we given? The world. Thank you, Tim. Glad you're here. <laughs> yeah, we were given the world. We were given creation. We were given creation. But I wonder if you could look at those verses and tell me what do those verses tell us about who we are? It's a narrative, it's a story, it's, this, it's a foundational story, it's got lots to tell us. But I wonder what do these verses tell us about who we are? 
Say that again, Ian. We are made in God's image. Made we, in God's image. Thank you. We are made in God's image. That's interesting for a start, isn't it? That we are made in God's image. Um, what else does it tell us about who we are? Do you, to, do you want to have a look so that you can see? Do you want, do you want, to, help? Do you want to see if you can help? Because they're not being very good out there. <laughs> there you go. You can read, can't you? What does it tell us about who we are? We're made in God's image. Say again. We have dominion over creation, the other things. Yeah, we do, but that comes later. <laughs> Say again. Custodians, yes. Again, that was coming later. <laughs> what, sorry, what was that? Male and female. Tim, yet again, I'm glad you're here. Yes, do you see that? We're made in, God's, made in God's image. Made in God's image. Male and female. What else are we? Who said? Somebody said the B word. Blessed, yes, we are blessed by who? God, yes. So we are made in God's image. We are made male and female. We are blessed by God. So that's the first thing. That's the first thing that we need to hold on to as we come to those verses. That's ha- these are foundational truths that we're holding on to as Christians. But what do the verses tell us about who God is? Remember, these verses are almost introducing us to the idea of God. But what do they tell us about who God is? Oh, hang on, hang on. Go on. Generous, yes. A giver of all, yes. Creator, yes. Thank you. Any other adjectives we want to draw out from this? He got tired and had a rest. (laughs) And do you notice, what you maybe didn't notice, but I've only noticed this the other day, was that the day that he rests on doesn't end. All the other other days, say, and there was was evening and there was morning on the sixth day or whatever. But on the seventh day, when God rests, it never ends. Which doesn't mean that God's gone to sleep on the job, which it rather means that... Everything that carries on after, throughout the whole of the Bible and throughout the whole of history, is us joining in with his rest. Just thought I'd throw that in there. Um, (laughs) So we've got God as creator. We've got God as, what else do we have? Some other words. Generous. We've got God as, did you notice that as as men and women are made, they are made in the image of God. There is something about who God is that we image forth in our maleness and in our femaleness. There's a gift in that. Um, one more thing I think that we need to just hold on to as we think of these words, as we see who God is in these verses. How does he create Sorry, somebody said something. Say again. He, how, how? How does he make it? He speaks. He simply speaks. The image is that God simply speaks and brings it to being. So he has an authority over all the creation that he's making. Okay? So we see, so we see something about who we are. We see something about who God is. And finally, on these verses... What do they tell us about our relationship, our relationship, with the rest of God's creation? What do the verses tell us about that, I wonder? We've had some of this already. Yeah, we're custodians of it. He's given it into our care. Yeah. So it's that, it's that, it's that actually he's, he's, he's given it to us to steward, to look after, to prosper. Yeah, yeah, 
using, it, use it, using the resources responsibly, not overusing. Yeah? So he's provided it for us to enjoy. And as we enjoy it, we should re be reminded that it's God's in the first place and that everything we have from it has come from him. So as the giver, hold up the giver, as God the giver, other side, that's it, gives us the gift, our response is gratitude. Okay? Gratitude response. Let's move on. Let's look at the other story briefly. You can sit down again. Let's look at the other story. How does the man in the story use creation? Might we say that he uses it selfishly? Yeah? Does that strike a chord? Might we say he's using it just for his own benefit? Yeah? And what does his use of that, of the creation that he's got responsibility for, tell us about... Um, sorry, I've written this question badly. So how does... Uh, what? As we watch him using this creation, his creation, the, cr the, the created part of the world that he's looking after, what does that tell us about his use of it? He's using it selfishly. He's using it only for him. But what does he not do? There's no sharing. He doesn't, he doesn't give thanks. And he's greedy. I will build bigger barns and I will put up Bigger barns, and I will eat, drink, and be merry. Who knew that was in the Bible, eh? <sighs> How is this man relating to God? How is he relating to God? Sorry, Ian? Badly. Badly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, he doesn't relate to God, does he? And he thinks he's done it. He thinks that as he has used creation, and the plants have grown on his land... He thinks he's done it. He thinks it's all because of his work. So he hasn't acknowledged the giver. He's used the gift. But he isn't thankful. I wonder, as we kind of think about those two stories that we've looked at this morning, those two narratives, how have we used what God has given us? How have we used it? Are we tempted to believe that the stuff that we have is ours by right? I've worked for it. Or are we acknowledging that there's a giver who's given us a gift for which we can be thankful? For which we can be thankful. And I wonder as we continue with these stewardship campaigns that, that we need to recognize that actually all that we have comes from a good God who loves us, who longs for us to know him more, and who wants us to respond with gratitude. Not with service, although that's a key part, but with gratitude so that we can fall into a deeper and deeper relationship with him. There was, of course, a big gift that God gave. What was that? Thank you. The all answer is always Jesus. Yes. If you're in church, you're on safe ground, it's probably Jesus. The big gift that God gave was Jesus. And as he, and as he died, not as he died to forgive our sins, he died so that all creation could be one day restored. And if you come to even song tonight, you'll hear a little bit more about that. So that all creation could one day be restored. So that the created world that we have damaged and scarred through our selfishness, through our rejection of a relationship with God, could be made new one day. And as God, the giver, 
gives us that gift, our response can only be thankfulness. Our response can only be gratitude. Our response can be to live lives that reflect who he is, giving thanks for all he does, and recognizing that all we have has come from him. Amen. Thank you very much for your help. You can take those away and sit down. No, thank you. Thank you. All right, okay, I'll take them. Thank you. Let's pause and pray. Father, we do want to thank you for the world that you have made, for our place in it. As we begin to recognize that actually you are the giver of all good gifts, that you've given us this world to look after, to care for, would you help us to steward the resources that you have given us well, to acknowledge who you are in our use of them? Help us to examine how we have used what we have, what we have been given. To examine if we are using it like the, like the foolish farmer, selfishly, greedily. Or whether we are recognizing that you are the giver who has given us a gift for which we can only be thankful for. Amen. Shall we stand as we say the creed together? We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please sit or kneel for our prayers. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. God of all people, as we gather together this morning, we celebrate your presence amongst us and give thanks for the gift of life that have you lavished upon each of us. We ask that you open our ears so that we hear your voice. Open our minds so that we may receive your eternal wisdom. Open our spirits so we may know your caring guidance and support. And open our hearts so that we may receive your wonderful love. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who accept responsibility for leadership and decision-making in the affairs of this country and throughout the world. May those who represent us in government be men and women of integrity, who keep their promises and lead us in the ways of justice and compassion. We particularly pray for the people of central Turkey and northwest Syria, whose lives have been devastated by the recent terrible earthquake. Be present, O Lord, our Good Shepherd, to bring comfort, relief, shelter and human kindness shield the people who suffer console those who are bereaved encourage the provision of relief strengthen the work of emergency teams and shine your light and hope in the midst of despair lord in your mercy 
strengthen Nick and Helen and our bishops and all your church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be unified in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. On this Stewardship Sunday, we pray for our own community here at St. Robert's, giving thanks for John and Nick and all those who share with us its activities, for those who serve its many and varied interests. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks for all you have created, for the beauty of the earth, for all that arounds and enriches our lives, the wonderful wildlife, countryside, and gardens. You have called us to be guardians and stewards of your creation. Turn us away from greed and destructiveness. Cleanse and forgive us our neglect and abuse of your perfect world. Lord, in your mercy. Fill us with your wisdom, Lord. We pray for all students at school, university, and in the workplace, that the Spirit of God may grant them the gifts of knowledge and understanding. Lord, give your love and support to all teachers and training professionals that they may share their knowledge with gentleness, patience, and concern for all their students. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, all merciful, we pray for all who face difficulties in their personal lives, those who are sick, those with problems in their families, in their friendships, or in their workplace. We think of those in need in our own community, the elderly, the housebound, and those in care homes, hospitals, and hospices. Lord, in your mercy. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. As we share a moment of silence together, let us particularly remember Jean Bennett, a faithful, long-standing member of the church and choir who died yesterday. We pray for Julian and his family. We also pray for John and Sally and his family with the loss of his mother earlier this week. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, be with us in the week ahead. Help us to be strong and not afraid, to be good-tempered and considerate and not speak harshly to work hard and help others, to be cheerful even when things go wrong, and to act kindly to those we find it difficult to like. Help us to receive your Spirit through prayer, fellowship, and service, so that the fruit of the Spirit will grow in us to your glory. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace among us. As we come for our offertory hymn, we sing hymn number 309 in the yellow book, Take My Life and Let It Be. And as you sing it, take note of the words. They're really, really powerful words. Um, as we sing, hymn number 309, Take My Life and Let It Be.
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Please sit or kneel as we continue in prayer. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. Dying and rising, he, he have, his dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and singing. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends and taking bread, he praised you. He broke it and gave it to them and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine and again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people and gather us in your loving arms and bring us with St. Michael and St. Robert and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share.
draw near with faith, receive the body um, of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
God, our creator, by your gift, the tree of life was set at the heart of the earthly paradise and the bread of life at the heart of your church. May we who have been nourished at your table on earth be transformed by the glory of the Savior's cross and enjoy the delights of eternity through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and among you and all whom you love. Amen. Amen. We stand to sing our final hymn, hymn number 248. How great thou art, our response to all that God has given in our praise this morning. How great thou art. Hymn number 248 in the yellow book.
And when I think that God, his son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in, that on the cross, my burden, gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. As we have thought of the giver, the gift, and our gratitude this morning. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. Thank you. 